I'm Steve from Steve's Monumental Adventure and this is my Vivaro A2002. Now the current layout doesn't really work for me so I'm going to embark on a journey to convert it to exactly what I want featuring this amazing sort of side bed. It's a little bit shorter than your average sort of double bed but it, it'll work for me. So this is what I'm going to uh, try and uh, carve out of this uh, build. So let's get started. Well, welcome to part one of the van build. And um, I'm in the process now of just started stripping things out. So what I'm going to do today is um, I'm going to take out the uh, rock and roll bed. So that's going to be unbolted then i um i've got to take that unit apart that's there dismantle that and um get rid of that you can see here some of the cupboards i've taken the cupboard um doors off the fridge is disconnected and i've just disconnected the battery charger so that's what i'm up to so that's the first little um bit that i'm going to do so these are the bolts that i'm trying to remove you've got one here and one here it's got um a allen key head on one and a bolt on the other so that's what i've got to basically um take apart so that's that's separated now you can see that's separated into one that's separated now into one piece the next job will be to unscrew these screws here which go up the uh, frame and that should be able to allow me to release the uh, frame completely then for the next part of removing the rock and roll bed, I've got to undo these screws that are screwing it into the floor um, at the moment. So what's happening now is it's a bit top heavy now, so it's what it's wanting to uh, it's wanting to um, bend over, so to speak. So what we'll do now is I've got to now take a look at this bed now, so, um, so we can pull it forward now. So we've still got bolts on that one side there. Look which will kind of make it awkward to uh, get out um, you can see i've got these bolts on that side now they're the bolts that have scratched it already look so there might be a chance and i might have to remove them as well but i haven't really got the room to do it at the moment it is clear that i might need to take these bolts off here um, it's an easy enough um, fix for anyone to put that together who buys it. Now before, the bolt was actually facing on the outside, so what it was doing is it was rubbing against the uh, fabric. So I turned the bolts around to the inside and that is mu a much, much better, um, a much, much better fit. So that should, with any look, that should come out of there. We don't want to damage the bolt if we can absolutely, absolutely help it, so a little helping hand. And we haven't got we haven't got any uh, washers on this one by the looks of it. So we'll go over to the other side and lean over. We'll get the uh, we'll get that in there like that. 
get the spanner on it, the socket, there we go. Right. Okay, that's loose. So it'll be the same procedure here now. Where I've just got to get it out. There we go. It's loose. Right. Just make sure I uh, I put that back on there so we know what it is. Okay. So you can see now that it is in two sections now. So with any look, with any look, you should be able to pull that out of there. Lifting, it's lifting in one piece, so that's much better, isn't it? That as in that that little piece there. I can't argue with that, can I? So just put that there. For, whoops! I just put that there for the moment, okay. and then have a look at this piece now. So that's what I've got left now. Just this little piece here. So I'm going to try and get that out if I possibly can. So turn it on to the side. Like that. And there he is. There he is. Rock and roll bed. So in actual fact, a rock and roll bed, a rock and roll bed is only in um, for three parts. And see there that. Um, I'm going to have to have some new flooring in this because that has rusted the bottom of that out completely, hasn't it? But it gives me more room to work with and more room to remove the unit then, so that's good. Right, so my next job is to take the roof off this particular cupboard here. So it looks like I've got a few screws, um, a few blocks there. Um, and they look like they're screwed in from underneath and it's the same on that side. So with any luck, that should just lift off. got one and that hasn't got one on the roof either but that one has so that one there there we go we had one there and we have got one there Hmm. Doesn't look like it's connected up with anything else. The roof. So I'm going to take that off there as well. The roof of the cupboard off now. So that's that little job done. Now I've got to trackle the uh, back door and I've got a diesel tank there as well. To, uh... Right, well back to the build or the dismantle. What I've done now is I've basically taken out um, most of the um, side of this unit now, which is what I'm up to at the moment. And the um, diesel tank for the, um, the night heater. So there's a night heater there, that's all been removed. So I'll just need to carry on removing all these bits. Right, I have got the uh, the, all of the uh, bits and pieces out <laughs> it certainly looks a smaller van once you take everything out but anyway this is in the position that it's uh, it's going in that unit there is going against there um, and that means we've got about that much floor space with the bed but to be honest with you a bigger bed is 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 premium over um, that amount of space and at least I can open the fridge at night that's the main thing so all of the wires, all of the battery, all of that is all disconnected now. The night heater, that is all disconnected. Um, gas is all disconnected, water is, so we're there. Right, so what we've got to do now is I've got to move this out now and that'll have to go in my van temporarily, the other van. Um, and this will make way for the laminate flooring to go across, which I've yet to buy yet. So I've just got to sort of secure this now because it's a little bit flimsy at the back here. 
um, before I move it into the van it might need a little bit of a strut on the bottom there um, to stop it moving around because it's only held in we will want to break it so that's what I'll do now so there it is the empty van oh yeah so let's have a look what we've got here at in elements wise so we've got the night heater there look that's uh, isolated that's going to go underneath the bed we've got the 240 volt um, inlet there and the um, switch box there we've got the huge um, 105 um, amp um, leisure battery that's a big beast I didn't realize that was and we've got also the fuse boxes there in that Tupperware container for some for some crazy reason um, this is where the fridge was originally here so you can see we're back on the edge of the van there and um, we can start to see the, the insulation. I know it's not well, it's not great in here at the moment, we can't really see much, but um we're gonna just alter do some alterations. I think that's some um, the lighting to the to the switch to the lighting. Um but yeah, it's uh, it's coming on. So I'm at the stage now where I've got to put the laminate flooring in and um you can see I've got an empty van completely now. Now one of the issues I had was with this step here and because it's kind of recessed down the bottom there it kind of just catches all the dirt and the dust and stuff so i think it's time that i uh, got rid of that completely um and so what i've done is we I, we had some trim around here some stainless steel trim i've taken that off now and then i've used the multi cutter and then cut that out there so what i'm actually going to do is i found some board that's the same size so what i'm going to do is i'm going to pop that through here strengthen underneath it and hopefully the board will run right the way through then and that would look that would look quite nice um, and then just laminate floor straight over the top of it because um, if you want to clean it out and you want to sweep it out all you're doing is sweeping it onto there and you can barely get it off then um, so yeah there you go anyway I'll get on with it So I've done the step now, um, filled that in there, it's just some rough timber there, that's okay. Um, the floor isn't exactly level, which is a bit of a problem, um, nothing major I don't think. Um, I think it's this glue that's underneath it here, it's quite, this glue's quite lumpy. Um, anyway, never mind, um, what I'll do is I'll put some laminate on the front of that, trim that off nicely. I've sprayed some rust proof paint under there because there's a couple of rust spots and stuff. I'll finish that off and then what I'll do is once the floor's in, I'll fill under there with the expanding foam. And then before I'll put the floor in, I'll just fill these gaps in with some sealant. And then that, with any luck, that should be able to go straight the way across now. Um, apart from that bumpy floor. Well, on to the next section, which is now cutting a template for the wheel arches. So what I've done now is I've um, created the template now for the wheel arches and that's what I'll be using um, that's what I'll be using as the template to mark up anything in future so how have I done it well I've, I've first of all I've drawn a square around what the wheel arch is okay then I've used a bevel to figure out what the angle is that it's coming off at look there you can see use that bevel so that gives me that angle there then i measure the, the start of the curve and the end of the curve like that you can see the start and the end of the curve and then what i do is i've used this this sort of um, set square there and i've basically put there that on there 
I mean, it's going to be as near as damn it to be to be honest with you. Um, but it's underneath the bed, so it doesn't have to be perfect. So that's that's okay. Um, so the next um, step now is to go and tackle this with the uh, with the uh, with the jigsaw. So now that's the uh, template cut out. Now, as you can see. It's, it's not too bad actually, it ain't too bad. Like I said, the bed's gonna go under here, so it do not really have to be absolutely perfect, but that's good enough for me, that is, for that laminate. And I need a bit of an expansion gap around the laminate flooring, but I think that's not too bad at all, really. So I'll be using that much later on. So next thing is, is to uh, sand some of these rough edges out the back of the van now. <laughs> business now um one last hoover out and uh, i will start uh, popping the boards in um it's for quite funny when the whole thing is completely and utterly empty my next job is to put the laminate flooring in now so i'm going to try and sort of find the central point then and um obviously i've got to split it half and half as well um so finding the central well first one goes in and then obviously I've got all the cuts and everything a little bit further down to do and the wheel arches to do as well so um, that's what we're going to do now if you can see here we've got a little bit of a lip on the end of that which is what we don't want so we might just have to nip that off with the uh, with the multi cutter there so it fits nice and snug into there um, on this side it doesn't really matter because we've got um, the panel going in there or what we could do if we fit if we want to is we can turn it around that way it's more snug that way and yes we'll go with that that looks much better to me because it fits in snug there okay okay so what we will do is we will put the first piece in so you can see now the floor is going in the laminate flooring i'm actually putting a little bit of clear sealant underneath it um which just just helps it um bed in nicely um, I've got a nice snug fit along there, but obviously I'm going to put trim in this as well and the cupboard will be there um, and some metal trim along there. Now I've got my night heater there, I'm going to have to go around that the best I can really. Um, I mean it's going to be enclosed within the bed so it's not going to be a major major issue. The cuts on that side are going to be complicated and I'm just coming up to the wheel arch now doing the laminate flooring just make sure that you get the whole stretch in first before you do anything um, get it all cut then slot it all together because it's barely impossible to get another piece in at the end so what I'm doing is dry laying it what we call dry laying it okay okay now I've got a full board here and then a full board and a top that one in, as you can see so I'll put that one in okay So what I'm going to do first is I'll connect that one onto there, like that, nice and nice and snug. There we go. Then what I'll do is then put that into there. So we get a nice. Okay, so we obviously want a nice snug. We also want a nice snug fit, don't we? Okay, so we're a little bit out here, 
for some reason. It might just be the floor, it might just be the laminate. Um, there we go, the laminate's in there. That's nice. I just think we could get yeah, a closer groove on that, so that's okay. So, one thing we have here now is cut the line off, okay? So I've been following it with this here. Okay, so make sure I get a nice line across like that, okay? And it doesn't really matter if it's not that straight. Well, I mean, it does. But we can trim, we can trim that up at a, a later date. Okay, so that will go, that will go to the saw now. Now I've got a mitre saw that's got um, a very sort of thin blade on, so it's not going to split it. We don't need too much because it'll just spread out amongst the bottom. It's just a bead. it down a little bit because we are a little bit raised here slightly which is not great um, but the, it looks like the van goes up slightly there the uh, the um, the side of the van um, so maybe I'll just pop a bit more sealer under there um, and all I have to do right a bit more sealant under that, under that corner. Okay, so I'm literally staggering this, so I'm kind of like back to a cut again now, look down here. Um, I don't think it's going to be a full board though. Um, I think we might have to mitre the corner in on that, just there. <clears throat> so, as you can see now, I have completed the floor now. And that was all yesterday's work. It was a bit of a pain in the backside, but it's uh, it's done now. So, what I'm actually going to be doing with this now, is I'm going to have two Calax units um, running across here. And then on the back there, that'll be my storage and I'll have drawers on them and all sorts of bits and pieces from um, the IKEA Calyx units. Night heat rule will be hitting one of them um, and the pipe coming away to the front. And I've got this, then I've got this small section here that runs up here 
then I've got my kitchen unit there. So I'm literally doubling the storage in the van by using the under the under bed space, which is which is pretty good. Anyway, um, next job is putting the unit back in. But we've got all of these electrics to uh, sort out first. We've got all sorts going on here. <coughs> so the 240 volt, which is the voltage that comes in from the plug, which is on the back of the 240 volt, if you wanted to charge the leisure battery up, that comes into this spur here, into this junction box first, um, and then goes into the battery. Um, via the, bat the external battery charger i'm going to be doing away with that and there's going to be a split charger coming in which will always charge the battery whenever the vehicle's moving but we've got the option of the 240 now where the fridge was previously uh, gone we've now got the option to put the a new 240 plug on that part there because the only problem is is when it's on the back is yeah, when I'm reversing up into my parking space here, it usually sticks out a bit, so I am going to have that problem. Um, this is the fuse box junction box. Now I'm going to be replacing that by a multi-switch um, affair, which will um, help me. I'll be able to just switch all the lights on from one panel, so that'll be good. Because in here at the moment, it's really annoying. There's quite literally two switches for the lights, um, you know. Um, we've got a couple of sockets there. I might just keep them in because I think it, it, it comes to about here. The the unit I'll replace that USB there for that that's um, cigarette lighter there for a USB, um, and yeah, it should work out all right actually. Um, well, the trouble is when you you uh, when you strip it out, it uh, looks a lot smaller. But you know, it's it's about being um, economical with the space got the night heater there that'll be all plumbed back in the electrics have got to be hidden away for that um there's a few holes and stuff like this for where that comes from hopefully we can discreetly uh discreetly hide that but then i've got this hole at the back of here i don't know what i'm going to do with yet but i do think i'm going to put maybe a little table across here um to put some bit like more like a little bedside table if you like um, but yeah, it's going okay. Um, so all I've got to do now is wait for the, the good man, the electrician Paul, to come in and work his magic. So guys, I have um, done some uh, a little bit of marking out here. So I've marked where my Calax units are going to, which is just here where I've done in pencil. Um, and so and there's the unit there. So that whole unit is going to go in there. Um, at some point, I'm just debating whether to cut the top off that and just have it um, have it running across there and not have that high bit. But I've got certain bits and pieces like USBs and stuff like that I want to go in, so I might have to maybe look at that. But yeah, so that's that's um, that's our sort of plan here. My bed will come to there. You can just see where I've done that line there. So all we're waiting for now, I've got a little bit of doctoring to do on the top there so it, the, the unit sits more snugly into the corner and against the seats. Um, but Paul will be coming in and looking at the 240 um, connections, moving all that and sort out this spaghetti junction of a wiring system. But it's uh, not bad for a weekend's work. It's done. We've got a floor in. Um, it's time to uh, get on to the next phase.